in the prelude of this critique is a question and answer session regarding the lecture with Al Alama Al Muhaddith Wasila Abbas. The question and answer session took place in the Sheikh's house in Makkah on Thursday, the 3rd of May 2012, and the questions were asked by Sheikh Muhammad Al Maliki. Question 1. What are the conditions for the acceptance of a trustworthy historian according to Ahl Hadith? Answer from Sheikh Wasiala. It is well known that with Ahl Hadith, the conditions for accepting any report, historical or otherwise, are that the historian or the speaker about the events has to either have been present himself and witnessed that which he knows. This is the first condition. As Allah says, and you are not a resident among the people of Madian. Surah Qasas, Ayat 45. And Allah says, and you were not with them when they cast their pens. Ali Imran, Ayat 44. Allah verifies for us that the reporter of something has to inform based on knowledge if he was present. If he was not present, then the second condition is that he reports from a trustworthy source who knows about the report, a person who is well known among the people as a person who does not lie. It is permitted to transmit via middlemen, and that he mentions this, quote, I transmitted this from so-and-so from so-and-so, end of quote. If the person was not present and does not transmit from anyone, then this is a major discrepancy and the person could be sinful. Or if he transmits from a person who is not trustworthy, then he could enter into the statement of the Prophet wasallam. it is sufficient as a sin for a person to relay all that he hears. So a Muslim should not speak except with verification. Shaykh Wasilah then quotes, O you who have believed, if there comes to you a disobedient one with information, investigate, lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become, over what you have done, regretful. Surah Al-Hujrat, Ayat 6. So if a person comes, then the reporter has to either inform me of something which I rely on if he is credible and trustworthy. If he is not credible and trustworthy, then I am to verify his reports, and without verification, it is not permitted for me to speak. This is of the important conditions of a historian, or the one who generally informs of anything. Question 2. Do we have a right to defend the history surrounding our masjid specifically and our community generally? Additionally, is it permitted for us to mention the people who openly slandered us and our Salafi legacy in front of general people during a conference held in Birmingham? Answer from Shaykh Wasiyallah. By Allah, Allah says, and if you punish, punish with an equivalent of that with which you were harmed. Surah An Nahal, Ayah 126. It is permitted for a person to defend himself. Rather, it is obligatory for a person to defend himself if he finds a harm against his honor and self. The proof for this is the action of the Prophet wasallam, when he was with his wife Safiya radiallahu anha, when he walked her home after she visited him at his masjid. When he was with Safiya, he saw two men on the way, and then the Prophet walked fast and stated that it was his wife Safiya with him, so that there would be no suspicions that it was a non-related woman with him. It is obligatory for a person to defend his honour, and if he does not, then in reality false propaganda could do its damage and consume a person. Continuing with the Sheikh's answer to question two, he went on to say, as for how this defence should be, then the people or person who openly announced something untrue and false about you, it is permitted for you to respond to him openly, likewise. However, before this, we want from you to meet with him and say to him, you erred in these statements about me, so you must announce your innocence from this via the internet or on the website, just as you openly announced these inaccurate things about me. If he does this, this is good and we praise it, and this should be the first step. If he does not do this, then it is possible to announce that you requested him to correct his open errors. However, however, if he did not respond and persisted, then I have a right to announce this openly, as he spoke about it publicly. I likewise speak about him, due to him lying against me, and I pronounce my correct position, Naam. Allah says, Allah does not like the public mention of evil except by the one who has been wronged. Surah An Nisa. Ayat 148. You have been oppressed, yet the first step we want, even though they are the oppressors, and because they are upon Salafia, is that they announce their retraction from these words. If they do not announce their retraction, 
you have a right to announce a refutation of them and their lies openly and publicly. They have to be either met or corresponded with via certified mail, so that in the refutation it can be said, we met, if you did meet, or you say that we sent him a letter which reached him as it was delivered via verified means, and he did not retract, and for that reason I announced that this was a lie against me, deception to the Ummah, and sometimes this is a must for you to do. Naam. Question 3. Taking into consideration the main aim of organizing Islamic conferences, i.e. to convey beneficial knowledge, is there any benefit in giving lectures regarding the very sensitive matter of the Salafi Dawah and its people in the United Kingdom due to the precarious situation of the Salafis these days? Answer from Shaykh Wasiyallah. What I understand from the question is, due to the differences among the Salafis, is it permitted or good to speak in general lectures in front of the common people? What is apparent to me in reality is that we are patient and we do not announce these things in general lectures as there could be people who have no idea of these problems so we do not need to make them know of them. However, there is no problem in us meeting with them and writing to them specifically so that there is correspondence between us. This is better especially because we are in the land of Kuf and we do not wish for them to take us to account due to this saying this is better especially because we are in the land of Kufr and we do not wish for them to take us to account due to this by saying those people are excessive between themselves and fight among themselves. What is accurate in this matter inshallah is that you be patient yet this does not prevent you from addressing them with other appropriate people in order to reach an understanding. As for general lectures then these matters even if it is with indication and not mentioning names then it appears to me that this is incorrect in the lands of disbelief, especially as that will give them a bad image of Muslims, that they are at war among themselves. Question 4. After our analysis of the aforementioned lecture, we discovered that the brother who gave the lecture fell into the following historical errors. A. The brother spoke about some important local events connected to the history of the Salafi Dawah in the UK, despite the fact that he was not present during those times. B. The brother deliberately left off mentioning certain well-known details so as to present a distorted history which supported his propaganda. C. The brother did not verify his chains of transmission with us before he spread them among the people. Does this enter into the threat mentioned in the hadith? It is sufficient a lie for a person to relay all that he hears? Answer from Sheikh Wasiullah to question 4. A. The speaker could be truthful about people's history, even though he himself was not present, as it is possible for him to know about reports via verified documentation or via people who can verify. He has a right in this regard, with the condition that the report is verified about you or anyone. However, if the speaker was not present and does not reference his statements to anyone, then this is an error from the transmitter to relay in this way. There is no doubt in this. Part B of Sheikh Wasiullah's answer. You say that he deliberately left off mentioning, yet he could have forgotten rather than having done this deliberately. You also say so as to present a distorted history. If he really did this and was informed and then subsequently did not present an accurate and real history and left mentioning important details worthy of mentioning so as to distort history, then he must be corrected so that the people understand. And this is to be done with an accurate announcement. This has to be done. Barakallah Fikum. Part C of the answer to question 4. Yes, Jazakallahu Khairan. For this reason, Ahl Hadith are based on the Isnad. If I did not hear directly from the Shaykh, I have to transmit from the one who did hear from the Shaykh, i.e. so-and-so narrated to us from so-and-so. If he does not do this while he, he himself specifically is in error for transmitting these words when he should rather be saying I heard from so and so or the like, this is unacceptable in our divine legislation. And there is no doubt that when he has not verified what he says and has dis dishonored and harmed others that he enters into the statement of the Prophet wasallam. sufficient it is as a sin for a person to relay all that he hears. Because we are upon what Allah has instructed us when he says, 
O oh, you who have believed, if there comes to you a disobedient one with information, investigate lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become, over what you have done, regretful. Al-Hujurat, Ayat 6. This is not the Fasik only. This applies to any majhul and unknown individual who informs of something and does not give a chain of transmission, then verification is to be sought. It could be correct or a lie. So you have to correct the error with wisdom and good intention, inshallah. Question 5. What is the advice for those who wish to conduct a history? The Sheikh answers. Make it your custom that if you do not find a verified report, do not spread it. However, if it reaches you from so-and-so that he said about Abdul Haq Baker, brother Muhammad al-Maliki, or Wasiyala, something, then it is possible for you to go to him and say, did you say this yourself, O oh my brother? A person is not to spread all that which is said, and you have to verify, and if you cannot verify, then you do not speak, so that you will be on safe ground in your religion. The Sheikh then went on to advise regarding these questions. My advice for these situations, Barakallahu Fikum, is always that you do not begin to attack anyone. And I advise you, just as I advised the brothers of Salafi publications when I saw them, visited them and sat with them. I saw that they distribute translated works of Shakespeare Baz, Uthaymin and others, and I said to them, suffice yourselves with this and do not enter into other matters, then you will be upon good. Know that if one of you was to commit zina, there are other groups who if one of them fell into zina, they would be quiet about it. Yet you, when you find a word, even if it is light from some brothers, you spread it around. I advise you and all the brothers who adhere to Salafia that errors occur from everyone and it is not befitting to doubt if someone is Salafi due to some words. An error remains an error, a view remains a view, and the remaining issues in which we disagree with him over, then we are with him and we benefit from him. As for what the students of knowledge do, do during these days, that when a person makes even one mistake, they say, this is an innovator. For all of this, we say, leave it all to the ulama, and do not at all indulge in them, you or others. This is what I always advise to you and those from Salafi publications. However, those from Salafi publications, it is as if they enjoy dropping people who have righteous actions. If they are dropped, they had good and reward, inshallah. The Sheikh concluded by saying, Also, we exhort ourselves that if we see some errors from them, those from Salafi publications, such as is in their fatawa and so forth, correct these. Yet, as long as they cause doubts among the Salafi community in all lands, such as Britain, America and France, then this is something about which we fear Allah will punish them in this life and the next. The Sheikh's conclusion continued with him saying, this is why I advise them to keep quiet about some errors from some of their brothers and not to remove those brothers from the realm of Dawah on account of these errors. In the past, the Imams, may Allah have mercy on them, had their own views and they would critique each other for erroneous views, but they did not used to drop each other and say that they should not be listened to. They would bring attention to the error and that the error is not to be taken, yet the remainder from him is sound. So especially in those lands, make your way among Salafis in this way and be a force against Shia, Qadianis, etc. Jazakallahu khairan.